The Lord Jesus, as recorded in Matthew chapter 13, gives us a series of parables in which he talks about the principles of the kingdom. And in the first one, he speaks about the harvest that comes from the corns of wheat or the grain that falls into the ground. And in verse 8 of Matthew 13, he says, Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. It is true that some of the seed that we sow is choked and some is stolen, but some, he says, will produce thirty, sixty, a hundredfold. A hundredfold is ten thousand percent return on your investment. So the question is, was Jesus exaggerating? Well, obviously not. Someone led D.L. Moody to the Lord, for example. And we think of the thousands upon thousands of people and the people whom they then influenced and the people they influenced relative to the gospel. So no, this is not an exaggeration. It really happens. Now, quite some years ago, I was at a missionary conference in Southern California. Sitting at dinner time at a round table, there was a gentleman beside me, kind of swarthy skin, looked like he was from the Middle East. And I asked him the question, how did the gospel come to your family? And it wasn't long until I was astounded at the story and the principle behind this verse manifested in that story. He said that they were proud Orthodox and that his uncle, who had quite a serious temper, who had recently gone through a difficult time, was quite embarrassed by something he had done, and quite out of sorts with life. He was working in his store when to the door came a young Syrian college student who was paying his way through school by shining shoes. And so he asked if he might shine um, this man's uncle's shoes, and he said he could. So he got down to shine the shoes, but just before he did, he said, let me read you one sentence. And he pulled a little testament out of his pocket, and he read to him the words of John 3.16. Put it back in his pocket, shined the shoes, took the money, and left. No commentary, just that scripture. This really irritated the man. Most Syrians are Muslims. What is he doing giving Bible verses to me? an orthodox. And at lunch, he went home. And at this point, this man was a little boy. He was there with his mother visiting grandma. And he said, "Um, we used to have an Arabic Bible, and I want you to find it. And she said, I don't know where it is. He said, well, you've got to find it. He said, God created the world in six days. You can find that Bible in four hours. And so after work, when he arrived home, he took the Bible that they had found, took it into his room, closed the door, no interest in supper, he just read the Bible. This little fellow was sleeping with his mother in the guest bedroom when he woke up to discover this hard-hearted uncle on his knees beside his sister, weeping and saying, Dear sister, forgive me. I've been such a hard-hearted man. God has saved me. And there was such a dramatic change in this man's life that one by one, the members of the family began to get saved. However, the old grandfather, who was in tight with the local religious leaders, told his grandson, if you remain loyal to the Orthodox Church, you will inherit my wealth. And so this little fellow was determined to stay loyal to the church. But at school, um, shortly thereafter, they were having a class in religion, and the priest got into an argument with one of the boys in the class. And the boy said, baptism was not necessary for salvation. And the priest said, how do you know these things? He said, well, I have a Bible. Do you have it with you? Yes, bring it to me. And so the little fellow brought the Bible up to the front. The priest started tearing the pages out of the Bible and saying, I know what to do with this, pointing to the bathroom. And Christo was so appalled, he ran from the room, He went to the principal and said, I will never come back to this class again. This man is supposed to teach us the Bible. He despises the Bible. So the little fellow, as he heads home that night, he's very disheartened. 
His faith in the church has been crushed. And in order to get home, he always cut through a graveyard, a little shortcut, never bothered him before. But on this night, he could hear the spirit saying to him, if, if your bones were under that marble, where would you be? And so he ran to his room, got down on his knees, and this is what he prayed. He said, God, I read your book. I know how I should live. I can't live like this. Do to me what you did to my uncle. And he said, if you don't help me now, you have no right to judge me when I stand before you at last. And that night he put his trust in Christ. Well, little by little, the whole family put their trust in Christ. And this brother had a wonderful ministry, both in Arabic and English, reaching out to people with the gospel. And so I wonder someday when this Syrian shoeshine boy gets to heaven, the Lord says to him, would you like me to show you what I did with that one Bible verse, that one seed that was planted in that heart? And to be able to show that this whole large family that had put their trust in Christ, and many of them who had ministries. In fact, I told the story one place, a man came to me and said, I'm part of the harvest because this man's son had witnessed to me in the factory where we worked and I also put my trust in Christ. It's gonna be a glorious day when we discover that what Jesus said in this verse is really true, that some seed, a word here, a scripture there has produced 100 fold, 10,000% return. And I tell you this, God is a good farmer and he's going to bring a bumper crop for the glory of his son, that corn of wheat that fell into the ground and died that he might not abide alone.